So the Final Fantasy series is my absolute favorite video game series of all time. And the original game, the very first one, released in Japan December 18th of 1987. We in the States here, in the United States, got the first entry on the NES in 1990. Me and my brothers have been playing it since then, and of course my brothers kind of fell off the series as they got a bit older, but not me. I've been playing it, it ever since the, the early 90s. So what I wanted to do here is, in celebration of this 35th anniversary, is to rank all of the Final Fantasy games that I have played in this tier list here. And the idea is, any of the games, of course, that I've played, I really didn't get into a lot of the spin-offs, like the Chocobo Dungeon series or anything like that. Uh, but for all of these games, I just figured I'd <clears throat> give them that S through D ranking, because I don't really think any of Final Fantasies uh, classify as a F, although there's going to be one that's very close. And in regards to the ranking overall, the closer they are to the letters themselves, uh, the, the better they are. For example, if I put Final Fantasy 1 ahead of Final Fantasy 2 in the in the B tier, that means 1 being in this section is a better game than 2 in this section. And as you can see also, I've got many different iterations of the Final Fantasy series because again, it's not the Final Fantasy game or a Final Fantasy game if it hasn't been released a million times. And I've played a lot of the different variations. So, let's go ahead and get down to ranking some of these games here. So, I'll go ahead and I'm going to start off and do some of the offshoot games, some of the spin-offs and, and everything like that. And we'll start with the worst one in the series, and that is Final Fantasy All the Bravest. And I'm going to put that in the D tier. If I had an F on here, I decided not to have an F, but if I did, this would be an F because this is just a gotcha game. All the characters do is just attack and attack mindlessly. There's nothing to it. There's no any sort of strategy or anything. Uh, and it's a mobile game too. And to that end, if we go and look at the mobile side of things, we've got Final Fantasy Record Keeper. I'm actually gonna put this in the B tier. Because Final Fantasy Record Keeper, again, gotcha game, and uh, some of that can be kind of cringy, but it actually, the battle system is based off of uh, like a Final Fantasy V or Final Fantasy VI, uh, kind of like with IV where you're, you have five party members. It's really cool because you can have, you could have Final Fantasy characters from all the mainline series as well as Tactics and Type O, uh, but have them all in, in their own parties and competing and playing. Uh, have the one, it of course was a one player game and the said player would then work to finish out some of the, the battles in weekly events s specified on single games. So it was, really, it was really cool. It was a fun game. Um, I un unfortunately pumped a lot of money into it. Uh, I quit after about five years playing it, which is a good thing. Ended up saving some money there. Um, <laughs> and it's kind of sad to hear that uh, this game by Dina ended up uh, finally shutting down here in uh, the U.S. and internationally, but again, saves my wallet some. Uh, regarding when we talk about mobile games, also I'm going to rank Final Fantasy Dimensions in A tier. This essentially is kind of like Record Keeper and kind of like Final Fantasy IV After Years, which I'll talk about shortly, or in, in a bit here, uh, insofar as it's an episodic game, but it splits the Light Warriors uh, into both Light and Dark Warriors. Uh, four in the light world, four in the dark world, and it sees a lot of uniqueness too, where all of the the warriors can have some of the main classes like fighter or white mage or, or uh, black mage, but there are certain uh, classes such as paladin for the light warriors and ninja for the dark warriors that are only accessible by th th those type of said warriors. So it's really cool, the, that kind of stuff. And there was a little bit of an end game too when, uh, after you beat it with some uh, a couple little extra modes. And I really, really wish that Square would port that to either Steam or console or, or something. Maybe they'll surprise us for the 35th anniversary and put this and the six pixel remasters on one cartridge for the Switch or uh, disc for the PS4 and 5. You know, a girl can dream. Um, going to the next set of 
the offshoots. Let's do the Dissidia series. So we've got Final Fantasy Dissidia, and I believe this is Dissidia, the, the, the standard one. Uh, I'm going to put this as a C tier. This was a PSP game. Uh, it was okay. It was like uh, all the Final Fantasy characters, the, the main heroes of the first ten, and the main heroes, or, I'm sorry, main villains of the first ten, uh, fighting against one another in a sort of Kingdom Heartsy, nonsensical uh, story. It really doesn't make much sense, but the idea of seeing Cloud fight Garland from uh, Final Fantasy One, or seeing Terra uh, fight Sephiroth. I just thought that was a really cool amount of fan service. To that end, if we then bring in Final Fantasy uh, Dissidia, I think it was Dissidia Duodecim, I'm going to put that ahead of Final Fantasy, just the, the normal Dissidia game, because it this Duodecim essentially is Dissidia, but with a little bit of extra content, it was kind of a prequel. So it added characters like Tifa, uh, it added uh, Yuna, and like lightning from Final Fantasy 13 and a couple of uh, others and, and extras and then once the prequel was over then it unlocked the main game from the PSP it kind of made that said main game useless I mean if you think of it that way and then finally we have the uh, Dissidia Ooh, I believe I am a little mixed up uh, this is actually the Dissidia Duodecim this right here I think is um, well, you know what, they're all going to be in the C tier, um, because I, I think this is actually the PSP one, this is the PSP prequel, this is the uh, PS4 one, which was a normal full game, and I think it became free to play. Uh, that one is probably the least best of these, because I kind of felt like the controls and everything were convoluted. Uh, you did get to have three players in a team fight another said three-player team, but again, it was more heroes than villains, and you had to earn tokens in the game just to see the story of the game. I, I, I didn't like that. One of the saving graces with uh, the Dissidia for the PS4 was the fact that it actually had Locke in it, uh, my favorite Final Fantasy character of all time, uh, he, from Final Fantasy VI, but he's DLC, so I'm like, eh. So yeah, it, it, it belongs here in the C tier. Um, next for offshoot games, Let's go ahead and get uh, some of the Game Boy ones because, of course, the Game Boy games, they're Final Fantasy by title only because in Japan they're, and the uh, European regions, they're known as other uh, names and other titles. Uh, Final Fantasy Adventure, this is actually known as Final Fantasy uh, Gaiden, I believe, in Japan, and I think it's called Mystic Quest in uh, the European region. This is actually the first mana series game the next one after it is secret of mana for the super nintendo and then trials of mana or saiken densetsu uh for the the super famicom this is an awesome awesome game it's an a-tier game and it's essentially zelda but uh final fantasy i, I mean there's there's no other way to really to to put it and that's not a bad thing because uh it features a really fun overworld and and play play style it's got chocobos awesome music um, there was a remake for it on mobiles uh, on mobile and ios uh, devices which actually is very true to the original uh, form of uh, the original game here final fantasy adventure and this game here is available on the saga oh i'm sorry i'm wrong it's the mana collection on uh, most major consoles so great game can't can't recommend it enough next portable game and offshoot that I'm going to uh, list here is Final Fantasy Legend 1. And this game was a little rough around the edges. I'm gonna put this in the C tier, but above Dissidia. The reason why it was a little rough is the story was bare, really bare bones. Uh, spoiler alert, the bad guy is God. So you gotta, you gotta kill God. Uh, but again, kind of goes towards the, the man versus God uh, JRPG trope. Uh, the game, the again, it's it's a standard turn-based battle, but instead of football style, where you've got the players on one side and the enemies on the other, it's Dragon Quest style, where you just see the main characters, uh, or sorry, the, the enemies. You don't see your main characters. Um, it, it, the classes and everything were, were pretty good, but just eh, it wasn't nearly as good as something like Final Fantasy Legend 2, which is a solid. Uh, low-end 
A tier game. The reason why it's so much better than C is there's a lot more versatility in regards to some of the classes, the, the characters that you can uh, customize and select both in the beginning as well as your party members, uh, and even like specific ones like the monster where you, uh, you, you eat the meat and it, it turns it either into a weaker monster or a stronger one. Uh, overall, just the, the, so much customizability. The story was fantastic. It, for all, all intents and purposes, is a console quality game, but on a portable nature. And I believe it was remade on the Nintendo DS Japan only. Uh, but again, you're going to see these Legend games 1, 2, and 3 available on the Saga collection on most major consoles. And Final Fantasy Legend 3, uh, my guilt, my little guilt on this is that I've played it a long way through, but I've never beaten it just because there was something missing with it versus Legend 2. I think somebody, somewhere I've heard that Legend 2 uh, and Legend 1 was made by a core cast or, or a core crew that did not do Legend 3. So I don't know if, that, if that's what it was, but I think there were like time travel shenanigans here and I just didn't, didn't really capture me. So the next game, and warning, I, I'm going to warn y'all right now, this is where you, you, I might lose, lose you guys. My next game, Final Fantasy Tactics Advance, I'm putting in the bottom of the D tier. I'm putting it better than all the bravest, but it's, it, it's D tier. I'm sorry, this game really left a sour note in my mouth here. And that's because when I first played this, I went through the tutorial, the first beginning battle, where it's like some kind of snowball fight, and then the first actual battle that I got into, it's another forced one, uh, where the main character wakes up in Ivalice, where uh, the Tactics series takes place, uh, as well as Vagrant's story in Final Fantasy XII, and this world, he gets into a battle he, he can't get out of, and I had my main character attack with a sword, he got thrown in jail by a judge, and it was game over. I'm like, what? How is that fun? It just right then and there, I'm like, done. And I ended up selling that to my buddy Jason the 13th, which maybe, you know, looking back, probably wasn't the best idea because this game sells for a lot more than what he paid for it. And he paid, I, he paid me retail for what I paid, which was a good deal for me at the time. So yeah, not good. Not didn't didn't enjoy that. And to that end, and if you're still watching this, Final Fantasy Tic Tacs, uh, for the PlayStation 1. I have to put it in the B tier. I <clears throat> played it maybe about 30 minutes to an hour and just couldn't grab me. The reason I'm ranking it so high is just to, you know, hopefully uh, settle some of all you who are Final Fantasy fans and that swear by the love of, ta of Tic Tacs here. But just, I, I don't know, permadeath, and just some of the the gameplay elements like that just it, it couldn't couldn't get me couldn't grab me on that so i'm just kind of like eh so let's go ahead and start ranking the core series there will be a couple little spin-offs here and there but i'll rank them from the beginning of the series to the end as we run into said spin-offs so first of course is final fantasy one <clears throat> this of course the game that started it all yada 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 the NES entry, I love it to death, but realistically, I got to give it a C tier. And the reason on that, if I take my nostalgia goggles off, it's C tier because it's a buggy mess. There's, again, I've said this a number of time and times in my video videos that I've had where there are glitches galore, uh, there is like the Peninsula of Power, there is... Uh, spells that don't work and functions such as run that don't work properly, stats such as intelligence which serve no function or purpose, and uh, the tr translation is okay, it's not anything really to, to write home about, but again, for the time, uh, it was re a really good entry, but <clears throat> not, not very friendly to players now if they try to jump in there. To that end, if we compare that to the Final Fantasy Pixel Remaster version, uh, assuming, of course, we got the font fixed, that is a low-end A tier because it adds in so much of the stuff. I, I feel like the Pixel Remaster series is what uh, the designers of the Remaster series look at it like. This is what they envisioned the Final Fantasy series 
what they wanted it to be if they had the chance to, to remake it again from the beginning. And there's a lot of really niceties and uh, general improvements uh, such as spells that work and functions that work that just make it so so much better and, and, and run better and, and a lot quicker too. That, that auto battle feature with how tough some of the battles in the game are or how long they last, I, I absolutely love that. The next one I'm going to, to rank, and I'm going to shuffle these around a little bit because they're a little out of order. Um, is Final Fantasy 1 and 2 Dawn of Souls. This I'm going to put <clears throat> in the upper C tier. And the reason why I'm putting it up in the upper C tier is it turns Final Fantasy 1's magic, magic points into how many charges you could use to just standard magic points. It adds in a whole bunch of superfluous additional content and dungeons that just aren't needed in the game. Like uh, where you fight Final Fantasy 3 through 6 uh, bosses. I just felt like that was just added content that bloated it and didn't really serve any purpose. And the Final Fantasy 2 version of that, that was included in Dawn of Souls uh, was, you know, it was pretty good. It was fine. Uh, it really uh, took probably one of the, the best versions because it had a lot of updates to it that the Final Fantasy Origins, the PS1 version, di didn't have, such as unlimited inventory space, but I, I don't know, there was a lot lost in Dawn of Souls for the Game Boy Advance, especially like music quality. And to that end, if we rank the, uh, and I don't see it on my list here, but there's the Final Fantasy, up oh, here it is, right here, I'm sorry guys. Uh, Final Fantasy Origins, I'm going to put this as an upper B tier because Final Fantasy Origins is the PS1 version remakes of Final Fantasies 1 and 2. And Final, Final Fantasy 1 is, is Final Fantasy 1 with good number of the glitches fixed. Um, it leaves the chibi style character sprites even when uh, they get the class change or the class upgrade, which um, I, I'm a purist. I like how in Final Fantasy 1, even in the Pixel Remaster, they get out of that, that chibi style when they class change. Um, that's that's kind of nitpicking, but the music in it in both games is fantastic. Uh, Final Fantasy 2, again, this is one of the first time here in the U.S. officially uh, we were we got to play that, that entry, and it, it's Final Fantasy 2 is not a great game at all, but at least we finally got to play it. I mean, you know, it could be worse. To that end, um, I did play a translated version of Final Fantasy II uh, for the, uh, the the Famicom, and it's it's not good. It's a D tier, and it's it, Final Fantasy II for the original Famicom is a D tier because there are a few glitches in it. Uh, you have the experience and leveling system that is gone completely, replaced by a hey let's beat each other up like like crazy so that we can upgrade our strength and, and hit points or cast spells on each other until we can raise our magic points and uh, magic defense stat. I think there was a, a, a stat like that. And just the overall progression was just awful. To that end, the Pixel Remaster version of Final Fantasy II is probably the best version. And even that is not, not all that great. I'm putting that here uh, again music is the best that it is uh, story is the best you get the leveling that's the best that that it, it, it could be um, but the, the big problem with this is the fact that uh, one of the biggest issues is if you run into enemies that cause status afflictions on your on your characters it's a 100% hit rate I believe unless you have the ribbon equipped and if they attack all four of your characters before you have a chance to run or defeat them it's game over, death by a thousand hits from the enemy. So that that's not fun. It's not cool, and uh, they, I, I'm surprised that they allowed that in this Pixel Remaster version. Um, next is Final Fantasy III. Uh, I'm going to rank the uh, Famicom version, the, the NES version. This one I'm going to put in the lower B tier, and. I love the soundtrack. It's probably one of the, the best on the NES and Famicom. And it's probably one of the best looking and, and packed full of games. But the reason why it's 
low on the B tier is because it's very grindy. And there are certain aspects like when you get into caves where if you hit an enemy it multiplies and creates a completely new version of it and then if you kill all the enemies they only give you 50 experience points. And that's that's garbage especially because you, you, your characters need to grind and gain levels and everything so much in this in this particular entry. So that, that can get really annoying but there's the, this is probably like the peak soundtrack where Nobuo Umatsu has really outdone himself at this point in the series. I mean, you got themes like Eternal Wind, and you've got like the boss theme, which is fantastic, and even themes like I think uh, Elia's, I believe was her name, it's first time a character uh, got their own unique theme, and it's haunting, as well as the uh, when the airship leaves the floating continent for the first time that's another haunting theme so overall like it's it is a good game but to that end the pixel remaster is a uh upper a tier game because it takes all the annoying stuff with the famicom version and just i feel like it throws it out the window where you don't have to grind as much yes it still has those annoying multiplying enemies but they're a little bit more uh, squishy, which is good, and there's, it, it basically took a lot of the unpalatable parts of, of the original 3 and just kind of refined it, made it better. Both of these still have the ultimate classes of the Sage and the Ninja, so I mean, your mileage varies there. Uh, you, you'll beat the game with two Ninjas and two Sages, or uh, three Ninjas and one Sage, depending on your flavor. But again, it's, I mean, that's just how the original game was. To that end, we've got the 3D remake of Final Fantasy III, and I do not like it. I'm putting that at the low end of the B tier. And when I say I don't like it, I actually like it a little bit, but compared to the original, it's not as good because there are certain limiters on it. I think there's a thing where you can only have uh, three enemies in one battle at one time. I don't like how they created four unique characters to kind of give per I, I mean I, I guess i see it give, give the game personality and make it more palatable for new people to the game but i just felt like that wasn't needed and i felt like the 3d style was really blocky but again par for the course for the ds at the time and this game was ported onto uh the psp and then uh mobile and then steam but Pick up the Pixel Remaster version. Uh, I, I like that the best, and that, that's my recommendation. And now, we are going to get into the crazy-ass amount of versions of Final Fantasy IV that I played. And let's first do Final Fantasy IV for the Super Nintendo, a.k.a. Final Fantasy II. And I've got a lot of nostalgia goggles on, on for this, because me and my brothers uh, played this together, and... Uh, had, a, had a lot of fun with it. I dumped a mess of hours getting uh, my Rydia before uh, Cecil and crew boarded the Leviathan. I, I do a thing where I get Rydia up to level 60 uh, so she could learn Mateo because again the, the US version of this uh, known as Final Fantasy 2 was easier and Rydia learned fl uh, Nuke, which is Flare, at level 50 and then again Mateo or Meteor at level 60. Uh, again, a lot of nostalgia goggles, uh, but it is, it's, it's just way, way, way too easy. I'm going to put this, uh, I got to give it, I got to give this to the low end of the B tier. I mean, it's, it's so easy. They took out uh, abilities like uh, Cecil's Darkness and, uh, uh, what is it, Porum's Cry and just a lot of other stuff. I, I, just to try and dumb it down for us Americans, I, I, I hated that. To that end, we've got Final Fantasy Chronicles, which has both Final Fantasy IV and Chrono Trigger. Just the fact that it has Chrono Trigger would put it as an S tier. But we're not doing a Chrono Trigger uh, tier list. We're doing a Final Fantasy one. So I'm going to put this at the higher end of the B tier. The reason why is this uh, Final Fantasy IV for the PlayStation one was the Japanese version. Yeah, it's a little slower because of the CD loading, but it's nowhere near as bad as Final Fantasy Anthologies, which we're, we're, we're going to talk about shortly. Final Fantasy IV for the PlayStation, again, original Japanese version, it was the harder version, it was what uh, we should have got here in the States 
um, again, it was just much better. Um, Final Fantasy IV for the Game Boy Advance, uh, I'm going to put this kind of close to Final Fantasy II. It's going to be a little bit better because it's essentially the Japanese version, except it, it introduced a couple bugs like double turns, and it also added in a whole bunch of superfluous endgame dungeons, which, again, I feel were not needed. We don't need any of that kind of stuff. So I'm leaving that at kind of low end of the B tier. And where Final Fantasy for the PSP collection, this contains uh, not only the Game Boy Advance version of Final Fantasy IV, but also a newly created scenario between IV and IV The After Years, as well as The After Years. Um, the sprite, uh, sprites on it are fantastic, phenomenal, it looks great. Just because of that, I'm going to put that uh, up here in the, the higher echelons, um, but I'm right bef before the PlayStation version because again it has all that extra crap. We don't need we don't need all that extra stuff. And to that end, we've got Final Fantasy IV for the DS. This is a 3D remake. It gets rid of all that extra crap and it adds cinematics to all everything. Makes all the battles. I mean, if you thought the Final Fantasy IV Japanese version was hard, holy hell, that is this except on steroids some of the battles are super super hard and it's even though i don't like the remake the 3d remakes as much i have to give this one props just the really helps to uh show off a lot of the even like the voice acting and some of the scenes the, the biggest scene in my mind uh that really captures just how well the cinematics are are when uh edge uh, the, the ninja sees his parents sacrifice themselves because they've been turned into monsters by Rubicante. And Rubicante appears and Edge loses his shit completely and and just is in a in a stage of fury, gains additional powers and like you could really send with the music rising and everything like that, the the, the traditional fierce battle theme. I mean just just the whole uh, it, the Battle of the Four Fiends theme, I mean, just the whole thing of that is just captured so well. This is a uh, mid-tier A series game. I would put it here, just because of it does what uh, the 3D remake just couldn't do uh, for the DS, and, and it does that so well. To that end, the Pixel Remaster uh, of For Four, I'm going to put a little before it. The only reason I'm going to put... Uh, the Pixel Remaster before uh, 4 is that it's so much easier than uh, the, ja the the Japanese version of 4, like the, this PlayStation version. I, I don't know why the characters level up so much quicker. Uh, I just found everything to be so so much easier than, than what it could or perhaps should be, at least from my memory. So really, the uh, DS version is probably the best version of that. Then you have... Final Fantasy IV The After Years, and I played it on the PSP version, that one's the better version. This one I'm going to have as the Wii version. It was fine, it was unnecessary, I'm going to put it above, yeah, above, above the Pixel Remaster version of 2. It, like, we didn't need it. It essentially, it was an episodic series, kind of like Final Fantasy Dimensions, but focus on each character and there were just like if you thought there were a lot of characters in the original Final Fantasy 4 it's like hey here's all those characters back times three and I just it was unnecessary you didn't need that that many and especially because when you beat the game because it's split up into really like three whole parts the uh, one when they're on the earth two when they're on the earth trying to figure out how to get to the moon and then three when they're on the moon and there's a part in two where you essentially have to pick a certain set of characters for like the last battle or second to last battle. And if you don't, you either game over or a main character dies like completely. So like, and there's there's no guidance on that. So I I, I don't know. It just didn't. It, it was really superfluous. And then it also added in uh, bosses from Final Fantasies one through three, as well as five and six, and recycled all of the bosses from four a number of times. That wasn't great. Um, Next is Final Fantasy V, and this is a it's a good game. We I played the translated version of the Super Famicom, 
and I would probably put this in mid B tier, uh, above definitely above Final Fantasy IV, the, the Super Nintendo version, uh, the the American Super Nintendo version, above all of these, because there's a lot of customizability with the job system and a lot of replayability. It, it, it's really great for that. The story is boilerplate. It's it's almost unnecessary. You really don't need to worry about that at all. Uh, but it, it, it essentially is all about the battles and the battle system, and that is awesome. I will again say Final Fantasy Dimensions does it better uh, because one of the things Dimensions does better is that the freelancer job, once you start learning and mastering jobs, it makes the freelancer job like the ultimate well, the ultimate one, whereas that's not the case in Dimensions. You have to pick a job because some of the jobs are better. Um, another one is Final Fantasy V only allows you to put in one equipped ability or three if you're, if you're the Mimic, or just two for the Freelancer. Again, not the case with Dimensions. You can have, I want to say, like multiple abilities, um, and there's a lot of customizability, and it's just a, a wholly better game than V. And again, hopefully I'm not losing uh, all y'all on that, but it just it goes to show that Dimensions definitely needs to, to, to get re-released or ported. Next, I'm going to discuss Final Fantasy V for the Game Boy Advance. I'm going to put this a little bit behind Final Fantasy, the SNES version, because it, it's essentially this one, but with extra crap, superfluous stuff that we didn't need, includes, including four classes that uh, just add more nonsense to the game that that's not needed as well as a couple super, super boss I think three super bosses again not needed um, then we have the pixel remaster which is the superb version of the game the, the, this is the, the better version of the game and in fact I'm going to put it above uh, pixel remaster 4 um, and the reason, I'm, the reason why 5 the Pixel Remaster is better than 5. The Super Nintendo version is uh, a lot of quality of life improvements, the auto battle, uh, the, the best official translation, which again came from the, the Game Boy Advance version. Um, the, the, I think I said it before, the, but the soundtrack, especially like Gilgamesh's theme, is, is just badass. Um, you, you really can't go wrong with the Pixel Remaster. And again, it's, it's just, just that much better than the Pixel Remaster of 3. Much, but I, I, again, I love the Pixel Remaster of 3. Now we have uh, Final Fantasy Anthology, which contains Final Fantasy 5, which I've rated so high, and Final Fantasy 6, which is, well, I'll we'll talk about that shortly. And this, I am going to rank on the low end of the C tier because the load time on that is god freaking awful. I hate the load time with. Final Fantasy Anthology, where if you get into a battle in Final Fantasy V or Final Fantasy VI, on the, uh, the Super Nintendo version, for example, it takes uh, a second to, for the screen to kind of flash, and you're in the battle. For Final Fantasy Anthology, it's there's a very slow transition, but lasts about, I, I want to say like four to five seconds. And then when you win the battle, there's like a window that closes that's, again, four to five seconds. Whereas with the Super Nintendo version or any other version, it's immediate. And that just totally puts a dampen on the game. And the quality, so what's funny about this, this is a, these are CDs. Each game is on CD. The quality of the soundtrack is worse in Final Fantasy Anthology, for five, which is, again, Final Fantasy V and VI. It's worse than the original versions of V and VI. It's inexcusable. It's, it's intolerable. The worst version of the games. You're lucky I'm putting you, you, Anthology as, as a lower end C tier. I could put you in the D tier with, with uh, th this dunce and this dunce. Again, with Final Fantasy Tactics, that advanced, that's just me. Not my experience. Maybe it belongs up here, but yeah, Anthology, you're, you're luckier in the C tier. It's because of the games you have on your your uh, discs that, that you're there. To that end, Final Fantasy 3, again, this is Final Fantasy uh, 3 US, 6 in the States. I mean, do we really have any like doubt that I'm going to put it here in the S tier? It's it's an S tier game. We have an opera. We have Nobuo Uematsu's best music. We have the best character, which is 
Locke Cole, the treasure hunter, don't call him a thief. We have a, a wide range of other characters. We have the best villain in all of the Final Fantasies, maybe save another Final Fantasy, which I'm going to discuss shortly. I mean, there's just every so many things that run on all cylinders with, with Final Fantasy VI. It's an S tier. There, there's, there's no doubt in my mind on that. Um, to that end, we've got the Game Boy Advance version, which is essentially <clears throat> the uh, Super, Nintendo, Super Nintendo version, but with extra crap. And I don't like extra crap in my games. I'm giving uh, Final Fantasy VI my favorite game of all time uh, an A tier ranking because of all that extra crap. And uh, the Game Boy Advance kind of dumbs down the audio that's not um, the Game Boy Advance or really any, anybody else, anybody's fault really. It's just a, kind of a limitation of the system. It, it, it is what it is. But, and again, I'm putting it behind Dimensions because Final Fantasy Dimensions is that good of a game. Square needs to support that. But again, I, all that extra crap, it's not necessary, it's not needed. Everything was so gold here with Final Fantasy VI. And the Pixel Remaster, I mentioned this in my P Pixel Remaster review, it is a better version of the Super Nintendo original. And I cannot believe I'm saying that. I can't believe I'm saying that. Because, I mean, you've got the, atro the atrocious graphics for the mobile versions of 5 and 6, where it just makes everything look hyper colorful and everything like that. And yeah, I know that the overworld for the Pixel Remastered looks a little brighter than what the Super Nintendo version had, but just you've got everything that the original version did amplified to the ninth degree, the, especially the soundtrack. Everything's better with this. And the opera scene, especially with it having a uh, 2D HD or HD 2D look, and it's the vocals there in so many different languages. Yes, I'm aware that Solaz is not voiced by an actual operatic uh, individual or, or, or singer performer. It's actually just a, a, a standard performer, but that would make sense within the story because Solaz herself is not an opera singer. So. Um, and that was something that the creators of the, the Pixel Remaster had, had noted and, and stated. Again, Pixel Remaster, best version of Final Fantasy VI, S-tier game. And speaking of which, if we're talking about S-tier games, Final Fantasy VII, that's another S-tier game. The reason why Final Fantasy VII is S-tier is, of course, uh, the, the story, the characters, the, the music, um, I feel like the quality of 6 is actually a little bit better music-wise than 7. Uh, even the Super Nintendo versus the, the PlayStation. I still think the Super Nintendo's quality for 6 is better than 7. Call me crazy, I felt like 7's was a little bit more beep bop boopy. I don't know I, I, <laughs> how to better say it. It was more... Uh, they were just kind of getting used to it more or something. But um, I know the polygonal LEGO style hasn't really aged that well, but the, the battles themselves, they look like model like their normal kind of models how eight and nine look like and battle again battle system fantastic sephiroth is an amazing villain insofar as he didn't start the beginning of the story itself as a villain he's got that fallen hero trope and then it, 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 this game bounces between so many like uh man versus uh empire then it becomes man versus man then it becomes man versus god i mean it really goes everywhere there are some aspects of it which are a little cringy, such as some of the uh, stereotypes towards the LGBT community, which the remake helps to... I feel like it helped to course correct that a bit, so I really got to give credit to that. Um, but just everything with Seven, it, 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 in my mind, it, it is absolutely an S tier. It's one of... Uh, not my favorite game of all time. That That's Final Fantasy VI, but it is one of my favorite games of all time. It, it's definitely a masterpiece, and, and I just, um, I, I know that these main characters are made to be uh, relatable, and I really relate to Cloud. Of course, you have the unreliable narrative uh, with Cloud himself, um, but I just, in the end, Cloud is, he, he's, he's a dork with a crush. I mean, that, what, how many of us weren't Cloud when we were kids? I mean, just, just, just even that alone. Uh, he a dork with a crush and a dream to impress a girl, and I mean, 
Ah, <laughs> definitely an, an S tier. To that end, we've got the, this twin pack for the Nintendo Switch. I'm putting this in S tier as well because it's kind of like, it's got, it's seven, but with a lot of nice perks to it. Um, and this is the twin pack, kind of the PC version, Switch version of seven. So this is seven, but with the fast forward feature, uh, a little bit smoother textures, quicker load times on, on stuff. So it, it's a little bit of a better version, but it's not trying to wholly improve things. Now we go to Final Fantasy Remake. This I'm gonna put in the lower A tier, and that's because it's more of an action game, and I'm I prefer the turn-based, I'm old sort of style. Um, I didn't get as much into the, the action part of that. Um, didn't think they did that as well. Uh, you, you got games like the Ease series, like Ease Eight, that action game that did that that whole sort of fighting style so well that this just didn't capture that as well for me. But it's A tier because it helps to expand the story and the music's phenomenal. You know what, I'm gonna put that in the B tier. I think that that's a fair, <laughs> I kinda, kinda bum bumbling around a little bit, but yeah, I'm gonna put Remake as B tier because there's a lot of nonsense where a lot of stuff is longer that you don't need. There's a lot of stuff where you're in caves and dungeons and everything's kind of dank and dark and you didn't... Yeah, I, I would say that, that that part's B tier, but the game looks great. It's gorgeous. The models uh, for uh, Cloud and, and Sephiroth and all the characters um, look fantastic, but to me that's a B tier game. Uh, Crisis Core... Final Fantasy VII, I'm going to put this in the low end of the B tier um, because of the FMV system and the action style. It, it, it's okay. Uh, again, the Ease series games, a lot of them have done that better. Um, the FMV, of course, is a, is a slot machine, which is random. Sometimes it's random, really. Often it's, it's kind of not. Uh, story's okay. Gets to be a little bit nonsensical, kind of that Kingdom Hearts-y sort of where not a lot of stuff makes sense and just adds that whole lore from Final Fantasy VII world. Uh, but Zack is awesome. The, his love story with Aerith is awesome. And that makes <coughs> excuse me, the DLC for Final Fantasy VII, that stinger at the end of the DLC, uh, <laughs> when I watched that and seen Zack where uh, he's about to go into that church and he calls out for Aerith, seeing him about to I don't know seeing him going into the, into the, the, the church possibly reuniting with Aerith kind of brought tears to my eyes because of how Crisis Core ended like the idea that Zack after five years could actually see Aerith moving on Final Fantasy 8 this is another one of those that it's not as good of a game I'm going to put it in the C tier uh, above um, Final Fantasy 1 and 2 Dawn of Souls because it's not a glitchy mess like 1 and it's not mediocre like Final Fantasy 1 Game Boy Advance um, but it's still a C tier the story is good, the characters are good I, I really like the love story between <clears throat> really it's a love triangle if we look at it, the, the, the cover here does it really well because in the beginning Renoa tells Squall she's the be he's the best looking guy around when she's still dating Cypher. A lot of people forget that. She's still dating Cypher there. He, she got into that, that dance or whatever it was thanks to a connection with Cypher. She got in that, that mission for the Timber Owls thanks to Cypher. Uh, so it wasn't until like, uh, it wasn't exp explicitly said that they broke up and she kind of starts to flirt with Squall and you know, he, Squall's just like, whatever. But, you know, he really starts to care for her when he realizes that he misses her being there. And the whole love story, the first time that Final Fantasy game had a voiced musical track. Um, with that particular, that, that's this game is actually my wife's favorite game of all time. And um, so it, 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 in that end, it, to that end, it's kind of got a special place in both our hearts. But gameplay wise... It's not about leveling the characters, because you level the characters, it tears the enemies to go along with the characters. Battles, that kind of just makes the battles pointless, except for the fact 
that it's not about leveling the characters, it's about leveling the Guardian Forces, or the Aspers, the Eidolons, whatever you want to call them. Uh, so you just make sure you've got them equipped on your three characters at all time, level the, the Eidolons up, keep up updating their skills, and then, you know, you're, you're fine. I mean, uh, rinse, wash, and repeat. And use the infinite gill trick to uh, cheese buying stuff. Um, next is the twin pack, um, which again is the Final Fantasy VIII Remaster. This is a much better version of this game insofar as is, 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 it looks a lot better, it runs cleaner, it's got fast forward options. Um, honestly, it's, it's actually a really good version of the game and makes it a lot more palatable. Um, I'm going to put that probably right here, right below Tic Tacs, Final Fantasy Tic Tacs, uh, because again, it's still the, the, the base game, but it, 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 it's been upgraded enough to where, hey, it's a B-tier game. So now we've got Final Fantasy IX, and we're really running down the, the ringer here. Um, you'll note, I don't have any of the MMORPGs. I never played Final Fantasy XI, and I've played and beaten Final Fantasy XIV or Realm Reborn, but because they're continuing and contiguous games, just felt that, you know, we're, we're not going to rank them, it, it, it wouldn't be fair. Plus, I hate, I hate people, and I hate playing with these games with people, and I hate doing the raids. So that that does that just doesn't interest me. If I had a choice, I'd probably put them in the C or D tier and probably piss off a lot of you. Um, and actually, no, I wouldn't do that. 14, I, I, if I would rank Final Fantasy 14, it would be upper A tier because of all the throwbacks to the previous games. The soundtrack is awesome. The story is awesome. The, the game looks phenomenal, um, but I, I hate playing with people. I, I don't hate people um, because, I, I honestly, I love talking video games with all you guys and uh, with my friends and, and everything like that, but I just I don't like relying on other people uh, to play my RPGs. That's just, that's just me. Back to Final Fantasy IX. Final Fantasy IX is a S-tier game. It's S tier because uh, Pro Jared had really, the, the YouTube content creator really said it where it could objectively be seen as the best Final Fantasy game because it provides a core Final Fantasy player such as myself with everything that we want in a Final Fantasy. Turn-based battles, ATP system, um, a easy to, to learn uh, ability learning system, uh, where it's learned through equipment that, that is, of course, equipped like swords and accessories and armor. It's not that system's not overly complicated. Likeable characters, um, great musical score, uh, a good amount of battles and bosses and everything like that. Um, the only thing for me personally, like, I, it's not as good as seven, it's not as good as six. Um, because it's just, it's got this whole, the crystal came back. I remember that being a whole thing, but the crystal doesn't come back until the very end of the game. So it's not actually any sort of like core presence, but there's so many like subtexts to this game and, uh, the beginning where it shows all of the little themes for each of them, where, uh, I think Zidane's was virtue and, uh, Vivi's was, uh, was Vivi's sorrow? Um, and or was that Garnett's? I, I can't remember which, but just um, and the Steiners were loyalty. These are constantly things that the characters are uh, learning about themselves, and that's one of the things with this game where th there's this is probably the best character progression of all of the Final Fantasies, uh, maybe save the MMORPGs because the characters in the beginning of the game are not who they were at the end of the game. Maybe save Amaranth. The, the, he looks kind of like a, a, a rooster here uh, on the cover art, but um, he, maybe he's got the least amount of change out of all of them because he, of course, is the last character. You get him about literally like halfway through the game, but they're not who they, they were in, in, in the beginning, and I love that. Even the NPCs like Sid, literally he's not the same character that he was in the, in the beginning of the game, but... Um, it, phenomenal game, um, can't recommend that enough. The Switch version, I'm going to put it a little bit before because 
I think this version was the first one that was released or we released then seven then eight there's a fast forward function but it's not as easy to use as uh, seven and eight uh, version of like the fast forwards and that really helps to speed things along uh, I think there's a couple there were a couple glitches which updates had to be facilitated to, to fix like the overall music resetting every time you get into a battle and sometimes the battles don't start right I've noticed um, so yeah, it's, it's not as good, but it's still a great, 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 great game. Next up is Final Fantasy X for the PS2. Now I've got it split where there's the PS2 version and then the, uh, the uh, Switch or PS4 version, uh, the HD. The Final Fantasy X, I'd probably put this as a low-end, no, uh, high-end B-tier game. The reason why it's a high-end B tier is so well, what's great about 10 is the graphics the story the music is, is good um, the characters are great but I don't like the battle system the boss for the bosses you know what because of the bosses I'm gonna put that up here the bosses on Final Fantasy X are awesome. Like, you're really using your resources to be able to get the bosses and, and, and fight them and understand them. But the battles are so mundane and boring. It's a rock, uh, rock paper, scissors, lizard, Spock, uh, where one character will go against one enemy a certain way uh, it, it, to be effective. And that's about 80 to 90% of all of the, the, the main battles. And to me, that that's just, that's boring. It makes the battles a slog, and that's... I don't know. I just I didn't didn't care for that as much. But besides that, even though, like some of the mini games, besides that lightning game being hell, uh, I don't like Blitzball, but a lot of a lot of people do, and that that's a real big core concept with Ten uh, that, that really made that really lovable. Uh, to that end, we got the HD version. I'm gonna put a little bit less because it has extra content, which is unnecessary, like the dark aeons and. Uh, the super super boss penance and again I know I, I, I'm probably gonna get people saying oh well Final Fantasy X this HD version is really the international version which got re-released but uh, was also the original Japanese version but again I'm it, it, I, I, all that extra crap I don't like extra crap in my Final Fantasy games I like the core game uh, what, what they do in it um, even being the core game the monster hunting portion was a little tedious but for, for, the, your tedium, for your tedium, you're rewarded with a lot of extra uh, items that can really uh, help to fill out the sphere grid and really pimp out your characters, um, which is pretty fun. I think that's pretty cool. Final Fantasy XII for the PS2. I'm uh, moving on to. Uh, I'm going to put this as a uh, high-end B-tier game. And it's high-end because... When I first played it, all the political intrigue didn't really capture my interest. <clears throat> the, the whole wide open license board, uh, it was okay, but it just made the characters kind of like boilerplate, you know, they're essentially homunculi. You can turn them into whatever you want them to be. Um, the characters themselves and stories, uh, Ash, Balthier, Fran, and, um, well, really, Ash, Balthier, and Bosch, and to a lesser extent, Fran, were, were interesting, uh, but Vaughn and Pinello were, you know, su kind of superfluous. Um, it was okay, but um, the environments were really good, the music was good, the hunt system was fantastic, uh, I loved the bosses, super bosses, and, uh, that part was great. The battle system with the gambits, it was like playing Final Fantasy XI, but without having to play with people, which I, I loved. I love that about about 12. But Final Fantasy 12: The Zodiac Age is the better game, and it is probably mid A tier. And the reason why that's better, besides of course looking a little better, running a little better, having the additional fast forward options, which is awesome. It turns like that six hour Yasmat battle with the 50 million hit points turns that into an hour and a half battle which is more palatable um, overall improvements and adds that zodiac system where it actually allows you the player to assign jobs to each of the six characters then that is awesome I love that that adds diversity to the game and actually makes you think 
how you want to assign and uh, who you want to have in your characters. It also uh, makes a point to having magic because otherwise what's the point of having magic if uh, you know you're just gonna have attack all the time. So now you okay you have a, a, a black mage and maybe a red battle mage for Ash she's going to be primarily a magic user and uh, to that end it also um, it kind of lessens the emphasis of the the espers uh, which is actually a good thing because uh, espers doubled and tripled the magic points in the original ps2 version if you unlock the two or more uh maximum of three that's not like that in zodiac age it makes magic points a more uh tier correctly i don't know i just think zodiac age was the overall better game uh, definitely uh, and then next we've got Final Fantasy 13, which is absolutely a D tier game. Probably uh, one of the worst, probably the worst mainline series. This game has, it looks great. I like the characters. The music is decent. The battle system is awful. Awful, awful, awful. The beginning part of the first chapter or two, there, there's no point to the battles. Because you can't gain levels until your characters are foul C, I believe is what it is. And your foul C characters gain levels like the Sphere Grid, except they cap them at certain points. Um, you can only release the cap as you progress through the game. And that makes some of the bosses really, really difficult to try and fight. Uh, so you really got to make sure you have the correct classes, like, like Commando, Ravager, and, and all of that. And... It essentially, this game added the, the really annoying uh, scatter, what is it, was it scatter or something like that, when you hit, fill up that bar, and then you have a limited amount of time to actually damage enemies and bosses, and that's something that has kind of been at, at kind of a JRPG trope, um, where like even my my beloved E series uh, has that in in like since E seven and e, E's. Um, Memories of Salsetta, uh, Ease 8 and 9 kind of have that, but it's not as necessary as it is in 13. And unfortunately, that's in Final Fantasy Remake as well, which I don't like. It's another reason why it's a B tier. Uh, but it, it, thanks to this game, um, to my knowledge, I'm sure probably other JRPGs had it, but in my mind, it's thanks to this game that that annoying um, aspect was added to, to JRPGs as a, a standard trope, and I hate it. So that's why, again, 13 is where it's at. So Final Fantasy 15, I'm going to put at probably between 10, 10, 10, 2 HD and the original PS2 version. And keep in mind, I played this when it, Final Fantasy 15 when it first came out, when everybody was saying it was a janky mess. To me, Final Fantasy 15 essentially is Kingdom Hearts, but Final Fantasy and it's just bros on a road trip and it's kind of like two games it's a story of two games the first where you're road tripping with your buddies and yeah main character kind of has a bad bad thing happen to him but he's road tripping with the buddies kind of ch checking out some stuff <coughs> stuff you know things going on fun overall but where 15 kind of went off the rails for me was uh, the events in I forget what the name of the city was Alicia or something like that. It essentially, was Florence, Italy, and where Noctis fights Leviathan, and then one of his friends go uh, loses his sight. His fiance dies. His other friend uh, goes off and yells at the main hero for being sad that his fiance dies, and his other friend is blind. So it's like, oh, you can't be sad because. Your friend is blind and useless and keeping us all down, and you can't be sad. Your fiance's dead, and then a whole bunch of other crazy shit happens, and then oh, time skip ten years, and it's been night for ten years, and now let's go ahead and fight the the actual true villain, which backstory apparently is one of Noctis's ancestors for some reason, and. Uh, I don't know, maybe the story at the end kind of got convoluted and uh, just what happens to poor Noctis and his friends at the end. Like, he literally is a martyr. There's kind of like Harry Potter syndrome uh, to to Noctis at the end and to that, eh, that wasn't as good. 
but what makes this an A is just the funness with the road tripping and the battle system was pretty fun. I liked uh, some of the dungeons and extra stuff. The, there was a monster hunting system which was executed better than 13, not near as good as 12. Um, and really, it just it, it, uh, the music again good, the graphics great, characters. I liked how there were characters named Cindy and Dave. I think there was a Steve. Like I'm so used to these JRPGs having uh, c crazy names and um, just, I mean, shoot, Cloud, Squall, Titus, uh, elemental names, Lightning, and of course Noctis, and then Gladiolus is the characters, and then, okay, other characters with Dave. And then uh, there's also the comic book guy uh, from The Simpsons in there where you do uh, quests from, and it just, it, to me, that, that, that kind of tickled me. I thought that was funny. Um, so overall, the, the Final Fantasy 15 is a better game than a lot of people give it credit for, and a lot of people... Um, sad as it sounds, my age, uh, don't play that, or haven't played this, and it deserves a playthrough. Um, so this is my tier list. I've got, um, it, it kind of matches my top ten, that I've done, done a top ten for Final Fantasies here, uh, and it, again, should match that pretty, pretty well. Uh, Final Fantasy VI, uh, seven, and nine in the S tier. Um, uh, that was an oops. <laughs> oh, where did I have that here, I think? Um, and then A, I've got Dimensions leading A um, with uh, ports of 6, and uh, you've got the best version of Final Fantasy 4, which is the 3 Remake DS, and then Final Fantasy 12 right after that, then Final Fantasy 5 Pixel Remaster, then Final Fantasy 3 Pixel Remaster, then Final Fantasy 10, then 15, uh, then Final Fantasy Adventure, and then Legend, and Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy 1 rounding out the A. So take a look at this. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Do, does my tier list match yours? Do you feel like what I've got kind of is where you'd be at on this? Um, I, again, I don't have a lot of the other offshoots, and hopefully you haven't shot me for um, having Tic Tacs so low here, especially Final Fantasy Tic Tacs Advance, and not ranking Final Fantasy XI or Final Fantasy XIV. Um, hopefully that hasn't... Uh, raised your hackles or anything like that but again let me know in the comments section uh please remember to like and subscribe ring that bell for notifications and again just thank you for sticking around with me here hopefully you had me on as like a podcast style uh and hopefully i've done a good job running through these as, as i've been talking um again thank you so much for joining uh please make sure you take the time to uh find these titles in pc steam Pixel Remasters 1 through 6 are on PC and Steam. 7, uh, seven 8 Remastered, 9, 10 HD, uh, at the MMORPG 11, uh, 12 Zodiac Age, 13, 14 Realm Reborn, and 15 Royal Edition. Those are all on Steam. I, if, if this has caught your eye at all, please take the time to... to uh, support this series. It's a great series. 16 is going to be coming out next summer. I'm not that excited for it because it's not another. It's not turn-based again. It's a, from what I'm hearing, it's a Devil May Cry except Final Fantasy style and the the kaiju style summon vs summon battles. Just it's not capturing my interest. But who knows? Maybe it's going to be like Final Fantasy 10 with uh, kaiju style uh, Yuna's summon against like large style monsters. Uh, maybe it'll be like that. I, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not excited for it, and that's sad. I'm. I'm sad that I'm not excited. Hopefully, that's going to be a good game. I will be buying it because I'm an idiot and I love this series. Um, I love a love it to death. So again, thank you for joining, and hope you have a great day.